Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Wild Raven in the 15-minute pool on ICC. Let's open with E4 against Wild Raven. They're rated 1837. Let's check their stats. We get a Sicilian. Okay, so they've played over 415-minute games, peak rating of 1909. Hmm. You know what? I haven't played a Smithmore or Gambit for a while, so let's do that. It's intriguing to me to play Gambits in slightly longer time controls. I feel like if I play them at short time controls, it's a bit more of a crapshoot. <laughs> you know, playing a Gambit and Bullet isn't anything special. But in longer time controls, you really get this mix uh, between playing a quality line or trying to play a quality line, but also keep the, the game tactically complex and exciting Gambit style. So Black declines the pawn with Knight F6. Now here we're going to enter a C3 Sicilian. And I'm going to delay recapturing on D4 for a moment. So knight f6 on move 3 is one totally acceptable way for black to avoid going into the main lines of this gambit with d takes c3. So let's take here now. I can't claim to have much experience on the white side of this line. But we'll do our best. Okay, queen c7. Seems like black is committing their queen there a bit early. If I could get a rook over to c1 and hit the queen, that would be nice, but... For now, I have two minor pieces in the way, but I feel like the position of black's queen might be uncomfortable for them in the long run. Maybe knight c3 to b5 at some stage could be a plan for me. Right now, I'm just thinking about bishop d3, simply developing, getting ready to castle. If knight b4 after bishop d3, I think just knight c3, and even though knight takes d3 check, queen takes d3, would see me losing the bishop pair. I still sort of like my position. Knight b5 is again possible. I could also play a3 if I want, just to try to rule out any piece coming to b4. But that slows my play down a little bit, so let's just do this. If black gives a check on b4, I'll probably just play bishop d2. Wow, and b5, aggressive. So playeth the raven. Okay, so I can't take this pawn. If I play bishop takes b5, black's idea is queen a5 check, forking the king and the bishop. But I can just ignore it, so I think I'll just castle. Now bishop takes b5 could be played, so black spends a tempo defending that pawn. So they have gained some queenside space, but I don't believe that it's worth that amount of time in the opening, especially as black, uh, just to grab a couple extra squares like a4 and c4. I think they have more pressing concerns like their backward development, for instance. So I'm already looking at some aggressive stuff I can do here. Even moves like knight g5 come to mind. Trying to set up attacks on f7 or possibly h7. I could also play just bishop d2, with the idea of going knight c3 thereafter. This launch, knight g5, seems highly interesting, though. If h6, then queen h5, and I'm on f7 again. If g6, I have a quick bishop takes g6 there. So I think black would have to be really careful after knight g5. Maybe knight g5, knight c6, attacking d4. And I could throw my queen to f3 or h5, trying to set up a threat on f7, but maybe black can wiggle their way out of that. Hmm. I think if knight g5, knight c6, I could always just play knight c3, though. And attack d5. That looks pretty good. You know, I'm getting a positive vibe from this move, so let's try it. In the spirit of gambit play, <laughs> even though I haven't managed to sacrifice a pawn yet, let's give it a shot. Another popular way of declining this gambit, by the way, is on move 3 playing d3 for black. So if you don't want to go down the d takes c3 roads, you can play what black did in this game, knight f6, or pawn d3. I'll show that in the analysis. Hope everyone's had a good weekend and is looking forward to hitting Monday hard. Not too many big plans for me this week. Just recording videos, teaching as usual. I'm a chess teacher by profession, so... I spend most of my weekdays teaching, and also I'm working on Chessable a lot, my new venture, which you might have seen me promoting and um, discussing on my site, on my channel. Okay, so d6. 
Now Black's queen is communicating with f7. They are leaving h7 loose, but I don't know if I can really justify taking that pawn. This might not be a bad move by them at all, even though it is another pawn move. Because I think it is helpful for their queen to be observing f7 as well. I'm very tempted to play knight c3 and try to exchange off this knight, which I feel is black's best piece right now. It's black's only developed minor piece. So maybe if I offer a trade for it, good things will happen. If knight c3, knight takes, b takes c3, queen takes c3, I can probably just play something like bishop f4 and continue developing quickly. I could take a timeout to play something like rook e1 just to defend the pawn, but this isn't in the spirit of how we've played this position already. I want to avoid defensive moves. I want to try to take advantage of my lead-in development and put the pressure on my opponent. Taking h7, they could take on e5 then. And I kind of like my knight on g5. I don't know if I want to send it over to the corner quite yet. I feel like it could be useful attacking f7 still. If knight c3, they could just play bishop b7, but then I might gain extra options, like knight e4, or even taking on d5, developing my dark square bishop, and then playing a quick rook c1. All right, let's play this move. I've been enjoying following a couple major chess events going on. First of all, Tata Steel, which just concluded. Many exciting games played there. I think that might be my favorite super tournament of the year because it's a big one. And in the main event and also the challengers event, they always seem to have an interesting mix of players. Like there'll be the elite players, obviously, like your Carlsons and uh, your Caruanas, guys like that. But then they include some hometown guys like uh, Luke Van Welly, and other up-and-coming players like Hoi Fawn, for instance, was in the mix. So it's a fun event to follow. And also the tournament in Gibraltar is going on right now. So I've been enjoying those games as well. So Black does play bishop b7. I was thinking about just trading on d5 and then going bishop f4, and I don't see any reason to deviate from that plan. I'm probably going to do it. Bishop takes b5 does come to mind, because after a takes b5, knight takes b5, I get two pawns plus an attack on the queen, but I think it's unsound. If d6 was weaker, I'd consider doing that, but they have the bishop backing up that pawn. So let's trade. And I'll probably play bishop f4. Maybe queen h5 is a move I can consider as well, but bishop f4 looks like it's the most straightforward move, so let's do that. And now Black's queen starts to feel a little uncomfortable on c7. They might play queen b7 to avoid problems on this diagonal and also maybe create some threats of their own against g2, for instance. Okay, so here, after bishop takes e5, queen b7, I would have to tend to the threat on g2, most likely. Also, f6 could be a concern, but with queen h5 being possible, queen h5 check, that is, I don't know if I really have to worry about that too much. So let's say bishop takes e5, queen b7, maybe a move like queen g4. Let's just say hypothetically. That defends g2. And then if f6, I could even move the queen again, play queen h5 check. Do I like the look of that? If g6, bishop takes g6 check, h takes g6. Oh yeah, that's tremendous for me. So I'm liking that. And d takes e5... Again, would not be in the spirit of this position. I want to continue creating threats, so we'll play this move. But I have to play this with knowledge that f6 could be a problem later. You know, I have to anticipate black playing queen b7 here, attacking g2, and having the idea of f6 in mind. Otherwise, it would be kind of reckless for me to go for this. So queen b7, queen g4, they could play h5, but maybe then just queen g3 or queen h3. Something along those lines. Yeah, let's do this. 
And I think Black has to be a bit careful. Another line is Bishop takes g2, intending Queen takes g2, Queen takes g2, check, King takes g2, and then f6 at the end. I could take on e6 there, and then I'd be threatening Knight c7, so I'm not worried about that line, but that's also relevant to my calculations. Hmm. h5, and if Queen h3, maybe Bishop e7 for black. I could see them playing that. I could play queen g3 here, but that encourages h4. So I think of my possible queen moves here. I'd lean more towards queen h3 than anything else. The downside is the knight is not defended on g5, though. So queen h3, bishop e7 hits the knight, and I think if bishop takes g7, rook g8, I have too many loose pieces, the loose bishop and the loose knight. Maybe knight takes f7 is possible there. That would be wild in accordance with my opponent's name. <laughs> I see a safe option. If queen h3, bishop e7, I could always just play knight f3. But then knight c6, I'll g G7 is always loose, though. Not sure I quite have time to take that, however. Hmm. So yeah, a few things to consider here. Mostly just deciding between these two squares, G3 and H3. I think I'm going to play Queen H3. I like the look of the Queen a bit better here. Against bishop e7, I think I have options. I mean, even bishop f4 is an option there. Just retreating, and f6 won't be a huge deal anymore, and we do attack the knight. Okay, black continues developing. Makes sense. Now, rook f e1 could be played. Just trying to line up against the king on e8. Yeah, let's just play that move. Nice and simple. If knight takes, rook takes f6, then I believe rook takes e6 check. It's going to be pretty nasty for black. Even bishop g6, but rook takes e6 is just one move that I think looks pretty tasty. Let me pre-move this move. Since black has played h5, I don't know how confident they're going to be in castling short. Probably they won't ever get a chance to do that. They might castle long, though. I mean, I wonder if knight takes e5, rook takes e5, castles long, if I can punish black there. It seems like with the c-file open, I should be able to do that. But you never know. The king might get over to b8, and perhaps black can hold out here. So my opponent has a time advantage, as usual. <laughs> The Wild Raven is playing well so far. I was criticizing their early play, maybe this queen c7 move and also b5 a6, but it seems like they're making a good game of it. If bishop b4, I'll consider taking on g7. I might just play something like rook e2, but I would definitely consider capturing here. Let's see if they go along now. My queen would be eyeing that king on c8 if they do, but I think they're feeling the heat with their own king. They might want to run soon. Okay, so here, rook takes d5 is something that just crossed my mind. If queen takes d5, bishop e4. But after queen takes g5, bishop takes a8, I don't think I've gained much. So most likely I just have to retreat against this move, maybe just rook e2. Anything direct on e6? Probably not. Bishop g6 looks like a cool idea, but can I get away with that now? I don't think so. I think i got to prepare that. I am worried that they're going to slink away with their king, though, and just castle long. Bishop g6 would be a real nice shot if it worked. So if that happens... 
F takes G6, Rook takes E6, check. Hmm. Bishop takes E6, Queen takes E6, Queen E7, Queen takes G6, check. Maybe King D7, Queen F5, check. Wow, we get in a lot of checks. That somehow, so, somehow seems very dangerous for them. But I'm not sure. I see some lines where maybe they get away. This will be a tough decision because I've got four and a half minutes left. So Bishop G6. There's other lines too. And not even just taking. But taking on E5, for instance, has to be calculated. I was thinking maybe Knight takes F7 then. Even stuff like bishop takes g2 I have to look at. Really wacky stuff like that. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to play it. Yeah, let's go for it. I feel like rookie 2 is a bit slow, although it is the safer option. I might go down in flames doing what I'm doing here, but it's going to produce an interesting decision on Black's part, an important decision next move. And we'll see how they handle it. So if bishop takes e5, I'm strongly considering just knight takes f7. Attacking that rook. Threatening all these discoveries. If f takes g6, then rook takes e6, check. Bishop takes e6. Queen takes e6, check. Queen e7. I think probably queen takes g6, check there. King d7. And then... Queen f5, check. King c7. Okay, so he's going to play this line. We'll, we'll check that other line after the game. So against this one, I think i got to go here. I could also play bishop takes f7, though. But knight takes was my original intention. Hmm. Knight takes, rook f8. I win the queen. Yeah, let's do knight takes. More natural than bishop takes, I think. Even though bishop takes comes with check, this creates more threats. Black might take on h2 with check, but I think after queen takes h2, then the rook is still under attack. We're still threatening knight d6, the discovery. Black could castle there, interestingly enough. Although then I have queen takes h5, and I think they're just going to get mated. Ah, maybe they don't get mated, actually. Wow, that's interesting. Hmm. So bishop takes h2, check, queen takes h2, castles. I was thinking queen takes h5, rook takes f7, queen h7 would lead to a swift conclusion. But king f8, queen h8, check, king e7, they're getting away. So probably in that line, I have to move the knight first. So let's say bishop takes h2, check, queen takes h2, castles. I guess just knight g5. Hmm. So black moves the king instead. So I can go take this rook in the corner, but I'm also tempted just to play knight takes e5. And I'll be down a little bit of material, but I have a dominating knight on e5, and black's king will be questionable, I think, for the rest of the game. Hmm. So if knight takes h8 instead, probably bishop takes d4, or maybe bishop f6. Nah, they might play bishop f6 and then try to put the king on e7. I could also play d takes e5 here. Maybe that's even stronger. d takes e5 and then make this rook move. Aha, uh -huh, that could be the way to go. Let's say rook g8 in that case. Knight d6 maybe? Hmm, it's a lot to calculate. Okay, I'm going to do this. So let's... Play D takes E5. I have two and a half minutes left. <laughs> Very fun game. I'm liking this. So black can try to keep the rook and just play rook G8. But then I'm thinking just grabbing on H5 or maybe playing my knight out to D6 first. Because if I grab H5, I lose G2. I should be aware of that. So maybe knight D6 first. Yeah, knight d6, followed by queen takes h5 thereafter. And I think with that rook on g8, black's king, if it's going to run, would have to go to the center at some stage, like king e7.
This is tough because I'm attacking, I'm in time pressure, and on every move I have like two or three options that I have to look at and compare. Like right there on that last move I had knight takes h8, knight takes e5, and then the move I played d takes e5. I'm fully aware that I might have made the wrong decision, but with no increment and getting this low on time, you just kind of got to go with something. Try to compare the lines as best you can, and then make a decision. I still think black has a lot of issues to solve here. I wish this rook could participate a bit more. That is one thing I'm slightly unhappy about. But we'll see. It does cover c1, so at the moment black can't set up any inconvenient back rank tactics, let's say. Hmm, king there, but that doesn't seem good, right? I can just take on h8. King takes, queen takes h5, king g8. Yeah, that's going to be very bad for them. Okay, so let's just grab here. And if they can't take the knight, I mean, black's position is going downhill quickly. Hmm, yeah, so they're going to go for some desperate stuff here, but I think queen takes is just going to lead to a winning endgame. I could play queen takes h5 here, but I don't even think it's worth calculating. I think this endgame is going to be straightforward, so let's just offer to trade the queens. They will win our knight in the corner, but I'm up a, a full bishop after that. So let's just be practical about this. I'll probably centralize my rook next, maybe rook c1 or rook d1. Probably doesn't matter too much. I think I'll go to d1, looking for rook d6. I'm not going to waste time taking this pawn because my bishop is excellent on g6. It's going to limit Black's Rook. Yeah, and with stuff like Rook d6 coming, this is going to be over, even though I have very little time left. Okay, king there, but we can just chop this pawn. Now Rook e8 is always possible, forcing a trade of the Rooks if I want it. Yeah, let's just do this. Very simple, yet effective. Now both these pawns are under attack. Let's go gather this one. Bring our pawns up. Make sure we resolve the tension when it inevitably, inevitably happens over here. Keep bringing our king up. Just one position. And pretty soon, all we'll have to really consider are... Um, let's play this pawn up, by the way, just because we can cover these two squares. We'll only have to consider possible stalemate tricks by black, but he's got way too many king moves for that to be realistic. So, Wild Raven just resigned. Fun game. So, I think the tactical fireworks started somewhat early in this one, but Bishop G6 is the decision that I'll be centering my analysis around. I think it's helpful when you've just played a game to kind of take a deep breath, step back from it a little bit, try to remove yourself from the result of the game, and as make an objective assessment as you can about what just transpired. And I think, even though I won tactically after bishop g6 and this sacrifice knight takes f7, I think I could have played this better, and I also think black missed several defensive resources. When I played this move, it felt a little loose. It felt like I was almost trying to force the tactics. And they could be working in white's favor. I mean, it's it's possible. But I know for certain that uh, black could have defended better. So now that I have a plan in mind what to look for when I add the engine in, let's go back and do that. So we had a smith Mora gambit. Started off as a smith Mora gambit, d4. C takes d4, now c3. I have one game in my 15-minute archive where this variation variation happened. I think it was against somebody with NYC in their name. So they did accept the pawn, but I don't think I've encountered anyone who's declined it yet because I've only played this a limited amount of times. They played knight f6. The other acceptable way to do this is d3, just pushing past. Because the pawn on c3 is not great for white. It impedes my development. I can't put a knight here. 
So for black to just push past, even though that wastes a move, it makes white recapture if they want to get the pawn back. And also, most likely, white's going to have to push this pawn to c4 in order to get the knight to c3. So white wastes a bit of time. So knight f6, I just played e5. And now we've transposed into the c3 Sicilian, a line of the c3 Sicilian. I played knight f3. Since d takes c3 would drop the knight on d5, white does not have to recover the pawn right away. Now e6, c takes d4, and queen c7. So I'm more used to seeing black play knight c6 and d6 and leaving the queen on d8 for a while. So this move already suggested to me that maybe I could take advantage of uh, their backward development a little bit because black doesn't seem particularly concerned about developing their minor pieces. I think the trouble with a move like queen c7 is also that the queen is committed quite early and it might be subject to attack. I know it's hard for you guys to take that seriously when I play the Scandinavian religiously, <laughs> but there are some openings where you can get away with it and some where it's a riskier proposition to bring your queen out like that. And here, since the C-file is already open and there's multiple ways for me to potentially attack this queen going forward, like as I mentioned, trying to get a rook to C1 or maybe going knight C3 to B5, I'm just a bit suspicious of that move. So I'm going to add in the computer right here. I played bishop d3. This seemed fine. And I also considered playing a3 so black can't use the b4 square. But I've had good luck recently playing straightforward developing chess when my opponents are perhaps making some wishy-washy moves in the opening. So I was trying to stick to that policy. Here black played b5. This is a nifty move, but again, I kind of question whether black has time for this. Like, yes, I cannot take here due to queen a5 check. That's a motif that you should be well aware of, forking the king and the bishop. But aside from that, I think it's it's just a time-consuming operation for black. So I castle. Now bishop takes b5 is a threat. So black goes a6. The computer instead wants to push the pawn to b4, where it would cramp my pieces a little bit, like I can't put the knight here. Still, it's another pawn move, and I think white should be able to put my uh, pieces here to good use. So a6, and here's where uh, things took a, a turn for the sharper, let's say, with knight g5. I had a game recently against Gloty 4 in the semi-slav, in a gambit variation of the semi-slav. And in that particular line, knight g5 is a big motif for white as well. And I know in many variations, white can launch this knight to this square, and if black is underdeveloped, it can be pretty dangerous for them. And they have trouble dealing with the aggression. Because we make way for our queen to come to either f3 or h5. And we attack f7 and h7. So I don't know if this move is best. The computer doesn't seem to like it, as its top choice at least. It says knight c3. Again, gambiting a pawn. But developing quickly. But it seems like knight g5 is a reasonable move. Okay, and then black played d6. So... Having the queen communicate with f7 and trying to offer an exchange, the d-pawn for the e-pawn. I think this is okay. I mean, I didn't have a very easy time of it against this move. So despite it being another pawn move, it's probably fine. And here I played knight c3. I'm glad to see that was the top move for the engine. Because I don't want to take and allow them to develop with tempo. It gives them a reason to bring their bishop out and also hit h2. So... The consequences for black opening the center at this point with something like d takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes e5 are going to be greater than if I were to open the center. And that's because of black's king. So by keeping the tension here, I'm recognizing that should black want to initiate complications in the middle, uh, they're going to have to think twice about it because of their king safety, whereas my king is tucked away safely on the king side. So knight c3. And black declined to take the knight, I think rightly so. Although the computer seems to think differently, it actually wants to take there. I thought it was a smart play for black to just play a developing move and defend the knight. But maybe in view of some resource I have, that's inaccurate. So here, the computer really wants me to play queen h5. Which for the moment doesn't threaten, in, threaten anything in particular, because f7 is guarded by the queen and the knight, or the queen and the king rather. 
and I don't know about taking on h7, although maybe I could threaten to take with my knight on h7, and then go knight f6 check with the discovery on that rook on h8. Hmm, queen h5 is, is forceful, so what if g6? Take, hitting the queen, bishop takes, and now queen h3. Yeah, like the game, my queen ends up on this square. The computer really likes this for white. Hmm. Maybe a knight coming to e4. The dark squares around black's king are weak. The dark squares on the king side. So queen h5 was a move to consider. I instead took on d5. Bishop takes d5. And then played bishop f4. Black took on e5. I took with a bishop. Yeah, they could play knight c6 as well. I think that was a move the computer was just saying a moment ago. Developing, attacking e5, and also d4. It's been showing a4 a couple times, striking back on the queen side. Although I must say, I probably would not have played that, because my focus was more on the center and the king side. Computers have an easy time recommending moves like that, where you seemingly shift the focus of your play. But for humans, that's a tough thing to do. I think that's one area of the game where we uh, falter compared to computers. We often get very keyed into whatever operation we're trying to undertake, and sometimes to our detriment, where the, whereas the computer has no issue whatsoever in switching sides of the board if it thinks it's best. So black did take on e5, and I took with a bishop, so I'm trying to develop quickly and ideally with tempo like this, I attack black's queen. Queen b7. So now the g2 pawn is under attack, and also I have to calculate what happens if f6. So I played queen g4 here. This seemed correct, defending g2 and connecting my rooks together. Black played h5. So if f6, I was going to play queen h5, or at least I was going to strongly consider queen h5, because this will disturb the black king. If king e7 then I would assume queen f7 check is pretty good. I mean, even knight f7 is playable there. Same thing on king d8, knight f7 check is killer. If g6, we have bishop takes g6, and this must be winning for white. If h takes g6, we have queen takes g6 check. I don't even have to go for the rook right away, because f6 will fall, and if f6 falls, black's position is crumbling. Yeah, king d7, I take here. This rook is even trapped now. g2 is loose, but I don't think black has time to go take that pawn. I could also check on f7, and if the king runs to the c file, my rook might even join in. Rook c1 check. But I just wanted to have that in mind so that f6 is not a surprise. You know, you wouldn't want to, like, overlook a move like f6 if you were white. So black played h5, attacking my queen. Maybe knight c6 is better, per the computer's suggestion. Developing. H5 does weaken some squares, and like I said, it's going to be harder for black to castle short now. And here I spent some time, and I was mainly deciding between g3 and h3. But I'm not totally surprised to see the computer say that there's a better square available, f4. So if queen f4, let's try to calculate what happens if bishop takes g2 thereafter. Because that's the move I was afraid of. So queen f4, bishop takes g2. Hmm. Maybe something like rook c1, looking to play rook c7. Although bishop takes h1 would threaten queen g2 mate then. Maybe even f3. So queen f4, bishop takes g2, f3. And then if bishop takes f1, there's bishop e4, securing the queen and the rook. And also, mind you, black's queen must stay tied down to the defense of f7. So it may be the case that bishop takes g2 is simply too risky. Bishop c7 plus 7. Hmm. Yeah, that's not an easy move to see. The point of bishop c7 is to cut the queen's defense of f7. And it looks like black has no good options here. If f6, huh, rook fe1, another nonchalant move by white. <laughs> the computer has no trouble finding. Yeah, I mean, to my human eye, this looks kind of messy. And to execute a line like this, I'd have to think about it for longer to be confident about it. So, yeah, in retrospect, I can say, totally, queen f4 looks good and white has a lot of threats. But in the game, you're going to be afraid of that bishop takes g2 move. 
So that's why I, sh I played queen h3, but that gives away all of my advantage, according to the computer. Black still should not play f6 because of that bishop g6 check move. So Wild Raven correctly developed here. Knight c6. Yeah, round about here, my uh, internal chess brain was telling me that maybe Black was wriggling free. So we'll see what they missed coming up. So here I played rook f e1. They took e5. This should be okay. Rook takes. Bishop d6. This is also okay, according to the computer. I was wondering about castle's queen side, too. Maybe it's too risky, but at the time, this seemed like a reasonable way for black to get out of the e-file pressure. The queen is still guarding f7, so no worries there. Here I can switch back to a queen side attack, or switch over to a queen side attack. a4. What if they keep it closed? b4. Bishop takes a6. Aha. Uh -huh. Deflection. And if queen takes, now knight takes f7, and we got a fork here. Even this seems kind of messy, but the computer likes it a lot for white. Almost plus three. I won't go too far down that line, castle's queenside, because the engine approves of Wild Raven's move, bishop d6. So here's the moment of truth. I'm a little scared to check my next move because this is the moment I uh, was trying to key into in my post-game little synopsis there. So originally I was thinking about just playing rook e2, but it seems so slow. I don't know if I want to make that move. I figured even though they can't castle kingside, they would probably come up with something here. Yeah, maybe even bishop e7, as the computer is saying, which covers the e-file and attacks this knight. If I have to start retreating, I feel like I haven't capitalized on my position as aggressively as I could have. My position, you know, six, seven moves earlier was looking really good. So I tried to keep the fire burning here with bishop g6, but, yep, there you see it. Probably not a sound move, unless something drastic happens in the computer's calculations to change that. <laughs> so here, they took e5, but that's probably a mistake, allowing that knight takes f7 response. So let's try to calculate here, without looking further at the engine analysis for now. So if f takes g6, I was thinking rook takes e6, check. And that's a fork on the king and the bishop. King d7 is too dangerous because uh, they would be stepping into discovered attacks for my queen. So I think after rook takes e6 check, they either have to play bishop e7 or bishop takes e6. And I couldn't calculate it all the way through at the time, but let's say bishop e7. I think I can double rooks up on the e-file. And then if bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, there's no direct threat, but the g6 pawn is loose. Queen f7 could be an issue. Even though I'm down a rook for a couple pawns, black's king is stranded in the middle. That doesn't look good for them. So another line I thought about was f takes g6, rook takes e6, check. Bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, check. Uh, and then, is it bishop e7? No, queen e7. Yeah, queen e7. That was it. And then queen takes g6, check. King, d7, or maybe d8. Let's say d7. Maybe that's the best line of all. Because black could try to slither away towards, like, b7 or b6 then. Maybe I can play rook c1. But I suspect I just don't have time. When all is said and done. Yeah, probably not. I mean, then rook f8, and they could guard the f5 square. Let me show you what I mean. But this is a line that could have happened in the game. And probably works out in black's favor. Yeah, so queen e7 here, blocking the check. I do get to pick this pawn up with check. And now I've got a couple pawns for the sacrificed rook, and black's king has to run. But I might just be running out of steam here. Because if I keep checking, I think they're going to escape. King c6. Let's say I keep checking. King b6, and now I'm out of good checks to give. And black's material edge could take over. Hmm. Let's see if any other line is working for black. Uh, I think, I mean, king d7, as I said, way too dangerous. They're walking right into discoveries. On king d8 or king f8, at the very least, we can take d6, so clearly that's not anything to be concerned about. If bishop e7, I thought this rook ae1 move was good. 
as I mentioned just a moment ago. And then here, even though we're down a rook, there's a lot for black to have to defend against. Queen takes g6, queen f7. This is a much better version of that other line because black's king is not escaping. Black can't castle either way either. So, yeah, the key line is definitely this. Queen takes and then blocking with the queen. And maybe I would come up with something creative here. I also did look at queen d5, not taking on g6, but trying to attack this. Huh. Here black can even castle, even though there's checks to consider on a8 and c1. So this is the line black has to come up with. Otherwise, they're in bad shape. So let's look at Wild Raven's time usage. Because I think they made their next move pretty fast. I mean, the guys just hit you with bishop g6. There's a lot of stuff going on. Many variations to consider. I think if you're black here and you have that amount of time compared to white's time, you should be spending at minimum probably two or three minutes. And they didn't even spend a minute and then played a move that results in basically a game-changing evaluation swing. So bishop takes e5, and now I get knight takes f7 in. Maybe they missed this move. Maybe they thought I would take here, whereupon they can take g6 and... Now I don't even have a queen takes e6 move. But knight takes f7 is a good way to keep the attack going. And for the moment, I'm down four points of material, but I've got a threat here and a threat here. And also a threat here, knight d6, winning the black queen. So king f8. And here again, I had a decision to make. Three main candidate moves. Knight takes e5, knight takes h8, and the move I play, d takes e5. And I'm happy to see the computer... Is approving of d takes e5. I eventually went with that one because even though knight takes e5 centralizes my knight, it takes a bit of pressure off of black. The rook is no longer under attack. So maybe they could try to use that and climb back in the game, that brief window of uh, respite that they have. Yeah, and also knight takes h8. I thought they might play even something like bishop f6, and although h5 will probably fall, I thought it might be harder to target the black king when they could escape towards e7. And these bishops do provide some defense, especially the bishop on d5, guarding e6, and also attacking g2. So I'm glad to see d takes e5 is approved. And here too, black has to find an accurate move. I mean, I thought rook g8 should be played in the game. Because what they did, king g8, just loses after knight takes h8. I mean, at best, black emerges down a piece here. So I think they have to move the rook. Because if I win that rook for free, there's uh, nothing really to consider. Rook h6 is the computer's top move. I mean, against that, I can just do this and then take h5 with the queen or the bishop. Yeah, now I'm up two pawns. Black's king is very open. Ours is safe. This should be a win for white. Although with the time, you never know. What about rook g8? On rook g8, I was going to play knight d6. So getting the knight out and attacking the queen. And maybe with queen takes h5 or queen h4 coming, intending queen f4, I'm just winning here. Let's say queen e7. Take h5. This doesn't look like a plus 9 position to me. <laughs> it's equal material, actually. But yeah, it seems like the damage to black's king is enough. Their king is too exposed. It's almost caught in a mating net. I mean, the bishop is guarding f3, so I can't play queen f3 check. But even a slower move like queen g4 next, threatening queen f4, is probably going to be decisive. Nevertheless, black had to try a rook move, rook g8, or maybe the best move, rook h6. Because king g8, take. Now black is unable to take here because I get queen takes h5 in, followed by queen h7, and then queen check here. And after king e7, we have queen takes g7 at the end. Uh, we're not going to win the queen after this, but that's three pawns. Black's king is still on the run. I'm sure that white will win this pretty easily. Uh, in fact, I even get my rook to c1 in this line. We keep driving the king, and then they have to interpose here. I could even play b3 if I wanted at that point, or queen takes e6. Way too much. Okay, so you can see that this game boiled down to a couple key tactical moments. And one thing that higher rated players are better at than their lower rated counterparts is recognizing key moments. 
I remember um, the very first chess videos I ever did were for chess.com. And it was called a, it was a series called Sensing the Critical Moment. It was a three-part series. You can still view it on chess.com if you're uh, a premium member there. And those videos were all about how you recognize important moments. And one typical critical moment is when there's a major king safety issue to deal with uh, or the position is highly tactical and open. Um, if you can identify a position where the result of the game may turn on one move or one particular line, that should set off huge alarm bells in your head that you're in a position where you need to take some time and where you have to calculate accurately. So that's why I was criticizing Wild Raven's time usage right here because after Bishop G6, I mean, as you saw, they played Bishop takes E5 and they played that move in under a minute. And it was basically game over after that. But had they calculated F takes G6 and seen that Rook takes E6 while dangerous looking for black um, does allow them to escape, I think they, they might have even won this game given my time and my much worse position. But yeah, you got to train yourself to look for turning points in the game. And if the position is tactical and there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of lines that uh, need to be calculated, well, you got to put in the time to do so. You can't just close your eyes and blindly hope that the line you're playing is correct. That's the wrong way to go about it. Also, you shouldn't just believe your opponent. Like maybe Wild Raven didn't take on G6 because they believed me that Rook takes E6 was going to be dangerous. But I'm not sure if that line of reasoning holds because maybe they believed me about uh, this sacrifice in general. I mean, they took on E5, so they're probably going to make some capture here. So... As black, I would want to work hard and try to figure out the best one. Very fun game. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will be back soon with another video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Have a good week, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.